Hello, welcome back. It's time for the Counter Strikes here, and Optic vs SK on Cobblestone will be where we start things here for North America. Are you excited, James? You no. no. Okay. I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not, James? Why should I be excited? Give me reason to be excited. Because SK are a great team with with uh, with the likes of Fallen and Cold and. I'm excited for train between these two sides actually, because to be honest with you, like I know what to expect from Optic on train, but I don't know what to expect from Optic on Cobblestone. I feel like I uh, am going into this. It's going to be a learning experience for me. One, uh, one thing that's also really cool about this matchup is the fact that Optic are a team that are very capable, I feel like, of surprising people. I think you know they are the underdog here, of course, and they have players you know that have been showing me better and better individual performances, mm. and they've shown that they have the, t the the strategical capabilities to go behind that. Some good calling as well. So generally, um, I'm pretty pretty interested to see the upset potential. I think there is a lot of, a big upset potential here uh, in SK uh, losing potentially both maps against Optic. I think it's actually a possibility. Yeah, I mean, with the sex with the success that SK have had this year so far from Columbus onwards, you have to wonder if um, their confidence will be shaken because they've had mixed results as of late. Not terrible results by any means, but you know, when you've been riding the, the wave at the top at a peak for so long, when it goes down a little bit, maybe that'll uh, shake your confidence and you'll go down even further. Yep. We will soon find out. Cold and Co will be starting on the CT side. It seems of Cobblers, Optic won the knife. I think it's fair to say the T-side is favoured these days and they will start themselves indeed on the T-side. Okay, so here we go with the pistols and not many nades here to be offered, seemingly. I have to see whether or not uh, they can be used effectively. The smoke has been thrown by Tarek. Also has a P250, but the only uh, P250 on the map at the moment. Definitely good on those ranges versus Glo Oh no! And well, that fly, he's going to redeem himself immediately after shooting in his player in the head. Gets the, the frag anyway. So three versus three. The bomb site has been taken by Optic and they look good here for the plant at the very least. Naf trying to hold on two angles at the same time. As you can see, they're not sure where to look. The tree will come to his aid. So we've got the boost attempts coming in from the CTs. There are no kits. No kits on these three players. Or with Kevlar fallen. Looks in the expected position, but Nafly has a superior one. Mixed one now stuck behind the box, but he can just stand there. Well, well he could stand there while Tarek helps him out, but there are two CTs left, and there are two angles to hold. And down goes Tarek leaving. Mixed one on his own, exposed to the site now, but he'll finally get that last frag as Fur eventually went down as well. So Optic will just about take the pistol round. I do wonder, though, if there was time to plant the bomb there. I mean, sorry, defuse the bomb, sorry. We'll never know, we'll never know James. We'll never know. So let's uh, see whether or not Optic can actually convert here. As I said previously, uh, this is a team that can run good, solid anti-ecos, anti-force buys, stuff like that. So I don't really see them making a, a big mistake in a round like this. I feel like it's going to be on SK to either have some crazy Deagle headshots, and they've got a lot of Deagles, so that's always possible, or for them to force the error in some other way. But they don't have any utility to really try to do that, so it's going to be down to the raw shots there as uh, SK, the SK players try to get the most out of those Deagles. And the Max 7 that's on Fern, Fur is currently towards the A side of the map at the moment. And Optic are going to make their way towards B now, and they shouldn't really have too much issue. Well, let's see. Taco up close. Rush looking all over the place. He's swiping for days, Dan. Fallen and Fur. Two men left. Not much for them to do in this situation. Fallen may just try to hold on to what he has and get an opportunist frag. See if Optic feel like pursuing. Mixwell leading the charge with the MP7 and rush in for support. So just the uh, SMGs looking to clear house. Fallen can't get the second meat shot onto Mixwell. And that will be the end of the round. Now we've got the Eco coming out for SK. FNX had a fair amount of money in the bank. at 33k, 3300 rather, in the bank. He had enough to drop the AWP to fall in, in the following round, but spending that, uh, let me think about this. Well, no, he still can drop the AWP actually because the CTs won't need helmets as much as the Ts will. That said, if Optic uh, read the force buy, they can retain these SMGs, so perhaps a helmet would have been favorable. 
That said, grenades are more important than helmets, you could argue. So I'm curious to see if FNX will drop the AWP to Fallen in the following round. He won't have any grenades if he does. Well, he can make up for that with some amazing shots. And so far, Optica running, it's only been two rounds, but so far they've, they've been running a, a perfect t start to a cobblestone. And this this is a great map to really show how good at T-Sides a team is, because you know you get all these opportunities to actually see, you know, spots like this. You know, you know how do they run their anti-ecos, their anti-force buys? How do they you know go for their set pieces? What are their defaults? How coordinated are their defaults? How in sync are they? And the reason I say that on this map in, in particular, because like Yanko said on, on the desk just earlier, there's so few ways for the CTs to actually stop you from doing stuff as the T's that that any error is going to be an unforced error, essentially, um, for the for a large part of a round for the T side. So this is a good a good uh, way to judge a team's T abilities. And so far, so good for Optic with the 3-0. Ah, uh, so Fallen's just gone AWP, no armor himself. And FNX will be afforded grenades. Maybe this is the better way round for the SK side. Might be easier for Fallen to avoid being grenaded here. I think this might be the most difficult map actually to grenade a, a CT orb that I can think of. The usual flashbangs over the roof, but not going to flash Fallen. Kill escapes. Has a rifle for support as well. So all good in the hood so far for SK Optic. Didn't buy up completely. You see the UMP still in tow. So it won't be terribly worrying, but obviously. Still not ideal for them to lose around in this situation. So let's see what they do to get back in the swing of things. The bomb's still over towards A. Two T's towards A, two T's towards B. And indeed, they will slowly start to clear areas out now. Is Rush looking to pick something up, maybe? Nope, just winding back now they've cleared the area. The T's, CT's will be devoid of information towards A. Stuck on the site. We'll see if Optic can somehow pull a rotation in that direction. Yeah, so quite a slow, slow pace to start things off. Always good to note how the T side of a team starts off with a pace. So they might decide to speed it up later. They're kind of conditioning their opponents, testing their patience, exhausting their utility, most importantly, in a round like this. Where SK didn't have much to begin with. And now they're going to be ready to make their way in. And, well, SK don't really have any grenades left to counter grenades. So it works out from that advantage. That's going in Optic's favor. Now they just have to connect the shots. Easy way in. Naf just going to walk up to Cold Zero. Take him down execution style now. As it's just three players left on the server here. The bomb plug can just oh, barely come in in the nick of time. Fallen is in a one versus three now on the rotation. Again, no Kevlar for him. And he doesn't have a kit either. I'm sure there might be one on the floor somewhere. But he's just going to try to get out of there, which is definitely a good play to make in this situation. Save the orb for another day. But another good round from Optic. Very basic stuff. Play it slow, exhaust utility, and get yourself in there. I'd love to have like a, a round table discussion with orpers like Fallen and, and Kenny S who often end up in their fire spy round after losing the pistol with AWP no armor. Just to see how they feel about it across different maps or or what situations they'll be happy to to do that in and how important a difference the difference of Kevlar makes in such situations. Because it's uh, super interesting. It's not just them, I think Hen One as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of earlier. Hen one or Henny, whichever you prefer. He was often AWP no armor at the beginning of rounds as well. Although his team often just had terrible starts to uh, CT by rounds in terms of utility in general. But yeah, it seems a, a common trend across uh, some of the stronger warpers in the game at the moment. I definitely like it on special maps like this. You've got really long ranges to play with. Uh, lessens the likelihood of close range engagements and uh, grenades hitting you. So, I, I, so I'm, not, I'm not on your round table, James, but that's what I, <laughs> that's what I think. You get the push coming in here from Optic to play this anti-eco out. And again, they do have to worry about the AWP, but not for too much longer. Rush is able to get the shot in there. The distance of the TTs has been closed down very quickly. No more ranges to play with as those smokes also stop them from being able to, to really do much. Nice little kill there from FNX, but how, else, how much else can he get? Wow. 
Okay, that, that's pretty nice. FNX with two. Still has a good chunk of health. No Kevlar, though, but has this suddenly become doable? Looking like just for left alive at this point with a CZ playing around the boulder. Not very easy to make stuff happen from this position. But the ranges aren't too bad for him. And there it is. Rush finally peaks and finishes him off. Clean 5-0. Right then, SK on the buy once more. See if they can change things. Cold hasn't bought yet. Does that mean double offs? Does it mean double offs? No, it means four and fours. Maybe there was discussion. Maybe he was just doing other things. Full utility on the Optic side. Lots of Molotovs for them. And again, it's a great start for Optic. It's really horrible when you don't have a good start on the CT side. 5-0 though. 5-0 is pretty bad. Got to be worried if you are a Brazilian SK fan or from another country. This is good though. Two man spray down, almost a third. Not sure if the bomb came up on the radar there. Fallen putting more work in as well. Now he's got a crossfire. Ooh, FNX just, just denying Tarek the peak there. That was very weird. The uh, the Ragdoll anyway. The bomb is in front of Mixwell. We've seen him do some dirty clutches with the AWP before, but really he needs to take down the player by the door first. Oh, what is that? How has that, how has that been allowed to happen? Nobody else holding the angle. I thought there would have been a trade guaranteed there. Two players left. Cold holding a very nice angle, which would be like, nope. The dream is not happening on my watch. Man, we need a slow-mo of that. That was like a 360, like, 360 shot to the face. Oh, it is, okay, I guess this deserves a replay as well. But a little bit sad. I want to see. Oh, we got this as well. Okay, I'm, I'm happy then. That's, we're going to see the CZ just yeah, spinning around. Kylie Minogue style. <laughs> so uh, Optic, they finally concede a round, but because of the efforts at the end there, Mixwell you know, was able to actually mean that they only survived with two players. So SK's economy is not really in the best place. They can't really afford to lose this round. And as you guys can see as well as we can, the, the weapon situation definitely looks a little bit better here for Optic. And I think they're going to go with a similar approach, just play a really slow round, exhaust the utility of the CTs, then go in for the play onto B. This time, though, there could be a problem in cold. Will they have all the grenades there to clear out the stairs position at the end of the plateau and the, the corner in which cold is hiding? So that, I think that's really the way SK could get into this round. Stanislaus going up towards Fallen, but Fallen looks the right place at the right time. Was covering two angles on his lonesome. Sometimes Lady Luck is in your favor. Mixwell spots two players. His team are not deep enough towards Plateau to do anything about it, but Mixwell, could he be vulnerable in the drop zone with an AWP on his own? Rush, I think, might be on the high ground for support. No, he's down there as well. And indeed, Fur is going hunting. Down go the CTs towards the bomb site. Taco trying to trade, though. Two versus two. Now, Taco's in a position to stop one of the default bomb plants from coming in. That will take him down, however. That's going to give Tarek space to plant the bomb. Yeah, one versus two clutch situation for Tarek. Quite a doable one. Fallen is coming in quick, though. I think, oh, spotted by Tarek. Tarek is going to try to go for the shots here, but nice. Fallen makes it very difficult, and the flames burn Tarek away. And Fur doesn't have to do anything. He just collect the AWP and get himself onto the defuse. And it's quite funny, actually, that it's, Mixwell is one of those AWPers that just will go into drop even by himself with the AWP and just trying to make plays happen. It's actually amazing. Because as you said, James, it's a, it's a pretty risky way to play the AWP. You could try to play it from Plateau. A lot of people would, would put the AWP there, but Mixwell wants to get into the drop zone. Indeed he does. SK get another round on the board, but with only one player surviving, they will be vulnerable to the reset. Optic have enough money to muster one more buy at the very least. Rush with 7k at the beginning of this round, but he may need to drop two guns. I don't know. Someone's going to have to take a sacrifice. We'll be naff with the Tech 9 only. So uh, again, this is a great opportunity for Optic to really extend their lead if they can kill off what SK are carrying and take the round. Can they do it though? Maybe there may be a focus towards the B bomb site on this occasion. Rush just dropping the bomb around the uh, coat, uh, the suit of armor. Naf and Stanislaw holding passively towards A, and Fallen is once again in a very forward position where he previously had success, where he previously avoided flashbangs and general harassment from the T side. So we're generally seeing Optic playing very, very slow. 
And that's going to play into their favor a little bit later, I guess, when we eventually see that super fast round, perhaps. Have to see how that turns out. But right now, for this round, we get drop taken. Cole wants to retake it. Finds a great angle there. That's a beautiful frag to make. And all of a sudden, things are falling apart here for Optic, losing their one-on-ones pretty much everywhere. And now it's just down to Mixwell and Tarek. And of the AWPers of North America, Mixwell is definitely one of the better ones when you have a rifle in his hands. Seen some amazing work from him in the past with that AK-47. Very big task ahead of him and Tarek, though. A lot of would consider the two stars of the team. Tarek looking for the first opening. Both players here, Tarek and Mixwell, finding themselves entry frags. The bomb can go down now. This We have a round on our hands. How are you going to retake the CTs? Well, that's a good start. Tarek goes for the peak punish for doing so. Mixwell, he has a surprise angle, an off angle. But there is a flank coming in from first, so he's vulnerable to being traded here. Going to take the issue into his own hands. Surely Mixwell heard the player behind him. Going to try and kill everybody else, but Fallen will be quicker on the trigger finger. Nicely done. SK retained. Two people surviving this time. And uh, the money is awkward for Optic. They could go for a buy, but it would be lacking in grenades. And they're going to do it. They know there's still opportunity to break the SK side. They will continue to keep up that pressure. Yeah, that, uh, that re-peak of cold into drop was so key. Uh, I, I almost thought Mixwell was going to make that shot happen onto Fallen. That would have been straight to Reddit if he was able to clutch that round from the two versus uh, five, I think, that they were in. But SK Gaming, they've pulled some rounds together. And it's important. It's the T side of the map. SK have a very strong T side. All they really need is, is you know, five rounds for just a bit, of you know, a bit of security, a bit of a buffer. And they're probably good to go on that. Uh, that's the uh, T side of theirs. And we get the change of approach here. Optic running, not even a default, just pushing every player slowly but surely towards the A side of the map, just clearing out. And they may actually go back towards B, but they haven't really left anybody uh, watching or around the, the drop and plateau area. So this is quite, this, this does, does indicate to us that it's going to be A. We've got aggressive pushes coming in. Fallen's got to be careful. He's in a very dangerous position. Can he make something happen? Looking for the first frag. It's a game of patience here. Look how look at Optic. They get this position, forward position, then they just wait. I like it. Maybe waiting for someone to offer themselves up for sacrifice. Naf moving away from B now. Things will start to get quiet over there, but can Taco check it in time? There's still a smoke down towards B. And maybe the game is up now. Aggression coming in towards the A site for holding things down from the long push on Stanislaw. Now he can flank the other team, but oh no, the flash in his hand! We'll have to get taken down. FNX and Fallen giving themselves a man advantage. The bomb needs to get planted. Only 20 seconds left. Fallen misses the shot. Nafly has no idea what is behind him. <laughs> and that will be the round for SK. My goodness. Gracious me. Yeah, SK bringing things back. This is a little, this is really bad, actually, because Optic, they, they couldn't really afford to lose this round because they need that strong T side against the likes of SK. As I mentioned, SK have a pretty brutal T side themselves. And Optic's money. Uh, after losing this round, it has been broken. Had they got a bomb plant, maybe they could do a little bit more this round, but they still have enough to go for the half buy. They've got some Tech Nines to go with their Kevlars and a couple nades. So set piece onto the B bomb site. Let's see if they can make it happen in the chaos. Fast players coming in, Tech Nines moving accuracy. Cold Zero on the side, Cold Zero dead. Still Taco towards Chicken Coop though. Almost a two man spray down for him. But the patient play will do the job. Another round in a bag for SK. Consecutive rounds now. That's five in a row. And it's now Optic's turn to be at maximum loss bonus as the score is tied up. Yeah, five to five indeed. Where will the streak of SK stop if it is to stop indeed at all? Now, Optic again, you know, as I mentioned, we've seen all the slow paces from them. Are they, are they going to go really fast at some point? Obviously, the tech line rush. But, that doesn't, but I'm, I'm more thinking about the buy rounds here. Oh, that's oh, that's gorgeous stuff, James. Nice. That's that's fantastic, isn't it? The timing there is beautiful. Nice. But Naf able to pick off further down in middle, and that means that Fallen is alone on the A side of the map. Will this cause rotation? Typically, the T side is going to actually wait a little bit in a spot where they get a pick just to force rotation and make the CT setup more predictable and then they'll deal with it a little bit later on. And that's happened now. We've got two to a bomb site. Now Optic start to move to pressure towards B. Flash forces Cold off the position. You might need a teammate to flash him back, but 
they've all moved elsewhere. They're a man down. Taco coming back to allow Cole to peek. And there it is. Lovely stuff. Patient play from him. And he will deliver a kill for his side. Now we've got the push from Fallen towards Long A, which gives a game away for Optic that the play is towards B, but they're kind of between A and B at the moment. I'm not sure if Fallen will hear this. He's got the high angle over the smoke. Stanislaw doesn't realize how deep these guys are into Cobblestone and its angles. He will learn the hard way. Yeah, no kidding. But they're still mixed well alive. He's got no AWP to hand. And there's only three players. The real problem for Optic is actually the clock at the moment. That really limits the amount of options that they can uh, go for in this situation. Let's kick him just play reactively because Optic are forced to make noise. So it's going to be very easy for SK to work out what's happening. And Cole looking in the right place at the right time. Mixwell has to get the shot. He gets it, but he's not going to have any time Ooh. to get the bomb plant. If he had only connected that shot, still might be able to make it happen. Has to plant. Oh, no, too late. Too late, half a second too slow there. Mixwell knows it, tries to get an extra bit of damage done, but he can't do it. Optic five rounds against the six now of SK. Tight game so far. SK are starting to build some cash. Post buy, we have double ops and cold on 4K, fallen on 5K. So uh, SK have all the Ks at the moment. Whereas Optic are quite low in the hundreds. A Tech 9 play coming in once again. One player over towards A though, and it seems to be a fast movement there. Fallen misses the first shot. Now he needs to delay as much as possible. Tech 9 up close, very smart stuff. The team are rotating around him. There, there is a flank as well. He's got to be very, very careful. There goes Rush. Mixwell falling in the meantime. AWP's being picked up. What can it be done with it? That's the question. Can the bomb get planted? FNX comes in with that UMP, almost gets the player with the bomb. Not quite, though. The bomb should be able to make its way down. And also, that's okay. They're losing players left and right to these Tech Nines. Taco, last man standing in the one versus three, looking to make it happen. There's a peek from the plant pots, though, making Taco's life very difficult. He's got to go for it. A swat. He catches Tarek looking into the wall, I guess. Worried about potential flashes or something, I'm not sure. But either way, his teammates will clean up the rest. So eight, oh sorry, a six to six now as Optic tie things up. And now things get interesting because both teams have terrible, both teams have terrible money. Obviously, SK's buy is going to be um, a little bit more suspect than Optic's. But this this is uh, a decisive point towards the end of the first half. Yep, Fallen, AWP, no Kevlar again. Question is, can he keep himself uh, Thorn in the side? Two players towards A, and Fallen is indeed looking for these aggressive positions. Was looking towards danger, now he's over towards long. Are oh, the T's going to make the same mistake with that flashbang that didn't flash Fallen? They're going to go for a dry peak here, and that CZ is good for the first frag. Fallen, good for the second. That's a pretty big advantage. If you consider the, the arsenal that SK are working with, that goes a long way in Fallen. He might just get the angle. Or oh, he's looking for it. Oh, that is stunning stuff from Fallen. Exactly what you would expect. World-class Orpers going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Fallen's always good for it. And now a two versus four situation in the hands of Russian Tarek. A desperate spot for Optic. Wow, the range. The range on that Mag 7 headshot. Tarek alone, all alone. Two more players to find. If he's quick, he can get himself to the one versus one. Not sure if FNX spotted him there. He was holding a good angle. And he may be a nasty surprise that is not required because Fallen will do the job. SK back to winning ways in a difficult buy. And again, it was Fallen and uh, his support for his rifle that really did the trick. And I think that, that frag at the end as well, uh, James, I think it also gives you another argument for the AWP no Kevlar, if you, you, know, to, you know, just picking up the AWP. Because on the rotation from A to B, you can really play this angle of rushes right there with an AWP, but Holy it's crap. much harder with a rifle. He had full health. That's a bit insane. Max 7 RNG God is kind today. It's the kindest I've ever seen it. Optic charging into the B-bomb site once again. Taco in a nice spot, avoids the flashbang facing the wall, and he has cleared out most things. No plant for Tarek. Nothing more for Naf. This is, this is actually quite scary, to be honest. I mean, obviously, Optic have the capability to do this to SK on SK's T side, but I think it's much less likely. This is a great start for SK, despite the, again, despite the start that SK had, which was they were five rounds down, I believe. This is, a, this is quite a comeback for SK, quite a comeback. Can they secure the 9-6, though? 
think it's a quick drop take maybe in store. No, it looks like Optic Eye going to go for a quick drop take after all. Look at these, look at these incendiaries. That is a nice incendiary, but it also gives Optic information if they know enough about the map that there's somebody towards the tree position. Because that's the only way that Molotov is going there, if I'm not mistaken. If an forced from his position. Ooh, cold maybe in for nasty surprise. Nasty surprise indeed. Mixwell, undetected, gets a nice, a very nice pick off. And that's that's denial of information now for SK. They were trying to choke off long A, unable to do so. Fallen getting kills towards A, but is it A or is it B? The trade's coming in towards B. Bombsite, Fallen and Fur now on the rotation. Yeah, the big rotation. Been pretty good at it but previously, but this is a pretty tough spot. Now, spots the players doesn't get anything out of that, though. And that might be problematic, because that might have been one of his best chances to stop these CTs from making their way towards the bombsite. And... It is the last round, so they are committed to go for it, but Naf is going to be able to take down Fallen as he makes his way into the drop area for going around the statue. Too much to handle, though. Eight to seven after all, but still, even though it's not the 9-6 for SK, they had an, a very, very good recovery, and I think, honestly, I'm worried for Optic and their chances against the T-side of SK. Seven to eight. I mean, the pistol is going to be key first things first. So uh, there's a very brief technical pause coming in. Should not be long. But uh, yeah, I think if if SK win the pistol and don't get don't get wrecked by a force buy, then they're in a good spot to uh, maybe close out. I mean, 11 rounds is 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 not too close to the end of the map to be honest. So I think that it's still wide open at the moment. Optic got off to a very good start, but then. Once SK adjusted, they didn't lose many more rounds, which is one one strength of the top teams is that once they get once they're warmed up, once the momentum is going in their favour, it's going to be hard to knock them back off the rails. Yeah, SK are just insanely scary, even despite the what you know what you can consider not having the optimal performances lately. They're still a top three team in the world. And in they go, just charging up into that A bomb site. Go the Brazilians as we get all the frags here for the T side. What on earth is Tarek and Naf going to do? I mean, that's a, that's a start, but still need way more of where that came from. Tarek trying to make his way in through the main door. Shot in the side of the head, though. So chances are dropping dramatically. Little, nice little kill there at the end for Naf, but that's all it's going to be. A nice little kill. Small consolation. SK pick up that pistol. And we should expect them to get to the 11, but maybe Optic have something, something to say about that. In the face. <laughs> In the face. Great start from SK. Opted for UMPs and Utility over the AKs, as we saw in previous matches in the European region. Lovely flashbang for Stanislaw. He's got all of a P250. You're not going to get the 4K we saw from Rush the other day, but two kills will be good. Was it Rush with a 4K with a P250? Yeah, it was Rush, yeah. On nuke, yeah. on ramp. Well, I mean, there are two players left here, and Fur is surely going to die. He's got 13 HP. He's getting more bell rungs than Old Inferno. Cold now, last man standing versus four. What a disaster for SK. Optic fighting straight back. That's an insane round. <laughs> I mean, one flashbang, one flashbang, there it is. That is glorious. Everyone is blind. Everyone is super blind there. Stanislaw had a lot of time to, to get those kills. That's crazy. I think there was a second flash because the first person who was leading the charge was running backwards to avoid getting flash. But then when he turned around, he got flash as well. Interesting. And that's actually one of the reasons why so a lot of teams playing around to eco or, or what, what have you, they actually give a delay to the start of the round just so if there is a timing flash like that or something similar, you don't get caught by it. And even when there usually is, it rarely does that much damage. So great work from our Optic. Ooh, smoke trick. Dirty the smokes, James. Yeah, the bottom left corner is visible. We've seen some smoke tricks towards overpass short B as well from CT sides. Um, I do not recall who exactly it was, but uh, yeah, we've seen some smoke tricks here and there. Some one-way smokes. Dirty business. So, 
We have... As well as the pause. What do we have strikes. We have a pause in the Counter-Strikes, pause in everything. But SK, they're set up to go for the take of drop. This is their response, that force buy. And drop is one of the most impactful areas to take and one of the easier ones to take as the tease, just as Yanko described on the desk previously. Rushes in though, he, oh, he's got a great angle for these players. Beautiful position for all the frags. If there was a plan in this round for SK, it got blown up. Got blown to smithereens. Smithereens, it's a, that's a great word. Smithereens. Right then, nine to nine, not the start SK expected after winning the pistol. But is it the one they deserve? Who knows? Optic with full utility. And that fly continues with the UMP. In this particular round, he will spot some information. Doesn't want to get too close, but you could argue he is perhaps too close. At least for a P250. He needs to get out of there, but he'll be una unable to do so. Hasn't lost all the money in the world. Tarek cleaning up elsewhere. Taco looking for somebody to overextend to hunt, to be greedy for the frags, for the kills, for the gibs. For the dollar bills. Oh, he's, he, all he sees is, is death and despair. Oh, everyone's dead, oh no. The double peak. Oh, he's got a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to see two CTs yeah. just standing there. It's like a, Hello. like a video game. Hello, UT. I'm going to shoot you in the face. And the faces were shots. 10 to 9. Optic with a pretty unlikely comeback, to be honest. Naf's having a pretty good game on 20 kills at the moment. Really nice to see Naf having a stonker of a game. He's got himself the AWP as well. Naf is 2012, like the Olympics. <laughs> so Naf, is he looking for the timing? Is he actually going to go for the drop, uh, the uh, plateau peak? He does have assistance to do so. But uh, we'll see Tarek be the one to get the information there. Not much to be had in the way of information just yet with the smoke still up. Mm. And SK bide their time whilst these initial grenades go away. SK don't have a lot in the way of utility. They've got obviously like the five smokes and some flashbangs, but they don't have the Molotovs as well. Oh, a pick, an opening pick would be fantastic for SK. But uh, what is the play for them? It feels like they're very undecided. Looks like they're tr still trying to catch aggressiveness from from Optic, but Optic are settling down now. So I don't think SK will catch that. It's time for them to move. Oh, NIP grenades being lined up. But which way will they go? Maybe towards, so they could go towards B. They could potentially go for a split through connector towards A. But I would say B because I don't know that they would want to take the bomb through connector. That would seem like quite the risk. Oh, oh no, oh. one of them's messed up. Someone's not done his homework, James. He's skipping class. Maybe he changed resolution. <laughs> Maybe. That is a big gap as well, but will it be exploited? Oh, I just want Naflex to shoot through the smoke. So many targets running into the site one by one. Missed opportunities, perhaps. Indeed, missed opportunities. There are eight seconds. The bomb is on the floor. Oh man, Mixwell, how many can you get? Three seconds. Is it time to plant the bomb here? Stand you have to hide, you have to hide. No, it's not. They got the bomb down. One versus two now. Stanislaw can take his time here as he moves forward. Gets the flash in. This is going to be really, really tough. He's going to have to have hope that Lady Luck is on his side in this one as he looks for one of the two players. But they're just holding their positions right now. Looking for the cross. He has to cross. And he does cross. And Taco is ready with the AWP. Man. Not why play, man. Why Lady Luck? Why not Man Luck? Well, I don't know. Maybe he needed, that's, that's maybe, what people say. Maybe he needed man luck. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Well, Nafli needed some man luck. I, I mean, imagine how that round goes if he gets even a frag there. That was, that was quite the uh, yeah. unfortunate situation. While, while that smoke was down, I mean, it's like if you if you have a read, it's going to be the B bomb site. It's surely fish in the barrel. Surely fish in the barrel. I wanted it to happen so badly. <laughs> like so you're, almost, badly. you're almost guaranteed to get one kill, I think. Stanislaw guaranteed himself one kill, but that'll be that. That'll be all he wrote or she wrote, whatever you prefer. 
Bombs down, so is Mix well. So it's FNX. The trades continue further. Doesn't see the second person towards the balcony position, or does he? I don't know. But Fallen's holding the angle while Fur is doing the same. They've got the spare man. What is the spare man doing? Spare man is Taco, and he is also holding angles. They don't know exactly where this optic team are. Taco's checking the six, while the rest of them make sure there's no push from the CTs. The bomb will be collected. What kind of plant will come in, though? I want to see cannon plant. Cannon plant, so it's like the Dust 2 default plant. Oh, Fallen's Shadow. I don't know if he wants to go for the repeat there. Tarek moving in timely fashion. Everybody looking somewhere else. Taco's still looking for the flank. He's still waiting for the flank to come in as the bomb goes down. Yeah, decent positions here. Very That off angle for Fur is really, really good. Taco coming in from middle. Or oh, actually going up towards uh, A long. But with, again, that very brutal off angle. Nap will fall victim to that, as does Tarek. Closing the round down 10 to 11. A close affair between these two teams so far. But it does look to be that SK will take advantage here as they ha have now broken the money of Optic Gaming. And here is Taco going ham at the start with Fur closing things down. <coughs> nice. And. Well, th there's one flashbang, James, on Rush. We saw what they did with the flashbang before. Yeah, same one. Same flashbang. Stanislaw, are you ready? This time, Taco is uh, by the... Oh, no, he's facing now. He's facing. Where's that money flashbang? There it is. But Cold Zero is beyond it. And three kills will come in swiftly. Make it for Nafli. Forced to do the splits against his will. And Rush will do what he can with his small grey cream and green gun. When are we going to get a hot rod USP? That's my question. You've got a hot rod M4. You've got the hot rod AUG. I think there's another hot rod I can't remember. We I need the hot rod USP. Honestly, the usage stats for the org. The org sucks, man. I have an I buy power holo sticker on my on my org. The org sucks except for that one week with that really broken update that made the org the best gun in the game. I liked, I liked using the org, holding squeaky on nuke on the CT side and shooting through uh, huts. Yeah, there's some pixel angles there, actually. Uh, I liked using it there. Which, which are pretty nice into lobby. Um, well, Stanislaw, great position. That uh, did good favors here for SK in the past. Stanislaw only gets one so far, able to back off a little bit. Got to be careful here. No trace of fire through the smoke with the silenced M4, which is always nice. And Mixwell's lurking on the off angle, cleans up the business. Just two players left for SK. They go in for trades, and all of a sudden, three men are no more. Three men's are no more. Three men's no more. <clears throat> Cold and Fallen looking to equalize. Ooh, that's a lovely flash. Fallen could not be more blind, but Cold Zero is there to hold his back. To hold him down, and they've got flashes of their own. Not really superior flashes, though. Trades will come in. Fallen now versus four players. This is not an ideal situation. He will get wrecked in the side of the head. And follow it up in the chest. In the chest. 11 to 12. SK on the climb. Optic need to stop them. And they will have various tools with which to, to do it this round. Mixwell will be on the orb. Not a naff as we saw in one of the past rounds. And I think this will be a better look for Optic Gaming. Where is Mixwell going to go? He's going to go for the peak. Oh, that is just stunning stuff. Lovely. That is how you want to start a round as the CTs on this map. And he can fall back. Now Mixwell can fall back, play more passively. And that's exactly how Optic are approaching this. They don't need to really take risks now, but quick flash for some information. No information, except there is smoke. Tarek's position is strong at the moment. It means his team don't need to peek. They can throw pop flashes for him. And uh, unless the Molotov goes in that direction, he is probably going to remain unchecked if a push is to come in through towards B. But the bomb is currently headed towards A. And Nathalie is still close towards uh, B plateau. And why not? They haven't given up any players in this situation. So he can essentially be bait. Although there's probably a reasonable chance he will die. But there we go. Tarek will not be abandoned. Actually, Nathalie's position maybe makes Tarek go from a one kill position to a two kill position. And the bomb's gone back, and Stanislaus has made his way past FNX, actually. So there's a massive flank coming in. Oh, God. And the rest of the team are going to go towards B and absorb oh, the no. players coming their way. They're going to be absorbed, Dan. 
Oh no. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like an Akira when when that everything just grows and absorbs. Everybody gets absorbed into that big flesh thing. I haven't seen Akira. Oh. He's ruined it. Thanks. But I guess that sounds like most anime is absorbed into a flesh thing. I don't know. So we got the bomb just stuck there. Eski going to try to save now, which is awkward, isn't it? That was a beautiful flank from Stanislaw. It's just, it's just amazing that you can get into that position, especially when you have an advantage as well to, to actually push in the way that he did. It's like, it's, it's a situation where you're saying, you're kind of saying like, we could use this advantage. At worst, we go equal in players um, in this situation, or you give, or you, you know, you get all the information and win the round if you go for that push, or you just sit there with the advantage. Absorbed. So they went with the push and uh, risky, albeit risky, it was probably unexpected because CTs rarely do that on this map. Right then, Optic have evened the score once more. SK, one of uh, the best teams at making rounds work with suboptimal weaponry. Suboptimal situations, though Mixwell is no slouch. We've seen some pretty nasty things from him on uh, on train. And again, he is orping on on uh, on this map. So it seems maybe the orp duties go from person A to person B, depending on the map, maybe on the side as well. As I think there was a time where well that it would be primary orp on CC and simple on T for flip side. So we have a wall of smokes coming into the B bomb site. That is a lovely arching camera. Let's see what can be done. The tree position, haven't seen it too much in different matches, but it has been uh, a staple of today's match. Oh man, get wrecked by those staples. <laughs> yeah, three versus four here for Optic on the retake. I have to run through the smokes if they want to push right now. The smokes will go away, but Taco's lurking. Doesn't look good here now for Optic Gaming. Oh, oh. did he connect that? That is <laughs> unreal stuff there from Mixwell. Making it happen. Mixwell's so good at this game. Two more players, or sorry, three more players to find here for Optic if they want to do this. Does not look like they do, though, and I do not blame them. Oh, my God. It's time to go for it, Dan. Now they, now they can go for it. Oh! oh! <laughs> what is this? Oh, my goodness. Mixwell goes in now. There is time to do this. If he can just get a fast frag, he's going to force the peak straight away. Fallen has to peak. Oh, Mixwell misses the flick, but oh, Fallen is burning away. Still, though, makes the frag, saves the round for SK. That was a weird situation, James. Why did it get so weird? Mixwell's like, I don't like open. Why the hell you lying? Mm, oh, my God. Stop your goddamn lying. Through the wall, son. Boom. This is this is dirty. Imagine if they had clutched that. That would have been insane. Yeah. There was a time, do you remember on Dust 2, there was uh, a situation where T's had planted on B and they were pushing plays in CT. I think it was Kenny S in CT. They were pushing Tyson and then they, they all got killed and they lost, they lost the round purely because they're trying to kill people who hadn't had a chance to go and save yet. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'll just kill everyone. That's fine. Fine with me, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, it's not, not a good situation. Um, has it affected SK, though? Right now, they don't have much utility. I think Mixwell is the most clutch AWPA on, so clutch. on Optic. So I don't know why in a round like this they give the AWP to Nathlite. Because... Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it, it, I guess it depends on, on your approach to the round, and it seems they want to just sit and wait for the T's to come towards them. But if you look at Fallen's play in a similar situation on the previous half, he's taking, you know, he's, he's got a forward position um, and he's taking the action to the fight to them, rather. Yeah. You know, with a teammate in tow as well for support. So I feel like that would be the uh, more optimal play in this situation. But then again, if you're not prepared for it. And, and I was about to say, Mixwell's a very good rifler, so it does, with with Naf, maybe you don't ex expect him to be able to make plays like Mixwell can with a rifle as well. So like, Naf, just hold this angle whilst we, we allow Mixwell to go, get, you know, go and do stuff. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Uh, perhaps is the approach, maybe. And he, uh, Mixwell was able to make a frank happen there. They had some cool little aggressive CT setups. Uh, but SK are four versus four now, so they're gonna, well, they got 20 seconds, James. I just realized they got 20 seconds to uh -oh. get into the bomb site. How are they gonna do that? Mixwell's alive. Man like Mixwell. Gonna stop you planting your bomb zores and almost ace the team as well. This, I don't even know what's happened to this round. I don't, what on earth? Oh man, I guess because when Mixwell initially pushed and got the kill and there's so much presence around A, 
And early in the round, SK was somewhat invested then, or rather they pushed there a little bit late. They just took way too long to decide to go for it. Man like Mixwell. SK have called for a pause. They are in dire straits. Optic of two AWPs in this round. And uh, at 13.13, look at SK's money. Look at it. It's on the right of your screens. And their names are in white and yellow. Or gold. Almost gold, yeah, if you will. I like gold. You like gold? I like, well, I like, like, I have identifying a, it as good I gold. I have a one gram oh. bar of gold. Nice. What do you do with it? It cost me 50 pounds. Why do you have it? Because I wanted some gold, so I bought the smallest possible wow. portion of... Why, why did you want... Why did you, I mean, 9.999 gold. But what do you do with it? You just store it. it, it <laughs> did you buy it to store it? It sits there. It sits there. I'm technically it's an investor of precious, me precious metal, Stan. <laughs> because I have a one gram bar of... It's, actually, it's a bar as well. It's a one gram bar of gold. I have a gold bar. <laughs> and it weighs one gram. You need to take a picture of this. I don't... It sounds it's, ridiculous. It's ridiculously tiny. It's almost as small as a SIM card. Like a full size SIM card. 13 to 13, SK have opted for the force buy with grenades. Tech 9 will give them, it will offer them moving accuracy. The P250s will keep them honest. We'll see what can be done. They're lining up. They're lining them up, Dan. What are they, they going to do next? Shoot them all. Yeah, and this is this could actually work because we've got two orbs here for Optic now, so it could actually work out really well with the smokes. Tarek's got to do a lot of work. Tarek has to do a lot of work. Oh, he gets dinged straight away down to 4 HP. Gets one frag though. They go they split onto Rush. Rush gets a, a great amount of stuff done as well, and Mixwell comes in like nope. 14 to 13, and I have no idea what's going to happen here, but it definitely looks like Optic could run away with this. I thought SK going into the second half, I, I don't know, it just felt like, I felt good for SK, but it's been so back and forth on both sides, these teams. Impressive stuff from Optic, I must say. Mixwell on the 30 bomb now. Yeah, Mixwell. He's so good. Often delivers for his team, but can he take them over the line in this first map? Double orps. SK have next to nothing to offer this Optic side, apart from two P250s. And that's it. Maybe that's maybe they'll use the clock to allow Optic to get aggressive at a, at a bad time. I mean, as Optic must have uh, a good track of the T economy because it is clearly a full spy that just came in, which means they are clearly broken in this round. Yeah, not much to offer. So it's just a formality, really. Just hunting them down. Our Optic at the moment looking pretty good. Yeah, life is looking really difficult here for SK, generally speaking. I'm not sure. I wonder how they're going to get back into this one. Because they, they when eventually they can buy, you always have that factor <coughs> coming in for you as a T side that you can dictate the pace on this map. And you can set up around how you want to. It's harder, much harder for the CTs to kind of throw a wrench into the work. works. So I'm curious what SK think the solution is. Oh, just good luck, Taco. <laughs> good luck. I'll take you all on. Mixor got this. The drunk guy outside the pub. I'll take you all on. Just gets knocked out immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a better offering for SK. Five AKs, handful of grenades, couple hand hands full of grenades. What is the approach? Default to start things off with for for uh, SK. And Optic just keeping it, keeping it steady, keeping it the same. Nafly needs to make sure he doesn't go down early there. Does fall back straight away. Tarek looking to play close. Ooh, the NIP nades again. This time it made it over the wall, Dan. That's, that's a that's progress. Yeah, there may, may not be a massive gap in the uh, line of smoke grenades, but Tarek will get one down. The Molotov will isolate the rest of the team. Nicely done, no time to reload, but damage has been done for the time being. Rush goes fourth. He will be sacrificed. And now SK have the bomb site, but there is a flank on the way. Yeah, ball in the last man, and Mixwell finds his mark. 16 to 13, and Optic Gaming indeed able to take down the Titans that are the Brazilians of SK Gaming. Beautiful uh, game of cobblestone. It was very backwards and forwards. We yeah. saw a lot of. We saw the strategy. We saw you know good defaults. We saw nice anti ecos. We saw great clutch performances. Great. And especially from the Orpers, Mixwell. I think he drops at least thirty four frags.
At least 34. Yeah, he, he did a lot. He got exactly 34, actually. 34 and 17, that is a two-for-one ratio. Marvelous stuff. We're going to go straight to the next map because these two teams were running late, so we'll try and get back on track. The next map is Train, one of many tonight. We'll see you here after the break.